Hani Bojo Kenegwaya, Minadora Makwen, Adishna Kaz, Majike Dodem. Today I'm going to be sharing with you a story uh, which is uh, called My Special Ceremony, and it is about a young girl's rites of passage into womanhood. And the reason I've chosen the story is that um, it really focuses on Odemin. And uh, as we know, this moon month is Odem and Gizes. And we are also going to be celebrating uh, what we call Indigenous Day or First Nations Day. Even though we know as Indigenous people that those days are every day, but we get one special day a year. And so I'm going to uh, share the story with you. But first, I'm going to start off with a song. And this song is uh, Seven Ichwa Swe Mashom Sak Song. And we are uh, starting off this day in a good way, uh, calling in the spirit of our seven sacred teachings, which is uh, love, respect, wisdom, humility, honesty, bravery, and truth. And each one of those teachings uh, work with one another, and there is not one that can be used without the other. So uh, starting us off in a good way like that. And I hope you enjoy the story. My special ceremony. The story is written, illustrated, and designed by Marie Gadette, translated by the late Rose Logan Pitawana and Dorothy Pitawana the story talks about a young woman's rites of passage into womanhood and her very thoughts. The book is also dedicated in the memory of the late Lily Oswamik Bourgeois, who continuously shared her love, knowledge, and commitment to the Ojibwe language and traditional ways. I was 10 years old when I first started my moon time. My mother was surprised that I had started at such a young age. I guess I was a bit younger than most girls. I didn't tell anyone when I started. I was shy and I thought I could take care of it myself. My mother realized I started a few days into my cycle. She told me that it was a very sacred time of my life, 
She was happy for me, but I wasn't sure why. She shared with me some of the teachings she knew. She then told me she would find an auntie or a grandmother to give me the moon time teaching. My mom had a dream. She dreamt about a relative by the name of Lily. In her dream, she realized that Lily would be the one who could help us. The next day, my mom phoned her. Lily told my mom that she would be honored to share the teaching with me. They made arrangements to meet at an upcoming powwow. It was October 23rd, 1999, my birthday, and the day we were meeting Lily. I was going to receive the moon time teaching. My mom brought strawberries, odemen, sema, tobacco, and a small gift for Lily. It's always good to offer a token of appreciation when asking for something. We met in a small room at the powwow. My cousin, my mom, and a young girl who had just finished her berry fast was there too. We all smudged Quinejige with the sage. Lily began to share the moon time teaching with me. She told me I was sacred and that there were many things I could not do during this fast, like I was not to eat any berries for the whole year. I couldn't even eat anything with berry flavor in it, such as strawberry candy, licorice, or even strawberry lip gloss. I couldn't pick up any baby that was not walking yet. This was going to be hard because my mom just gave birth to my baby brother. I really wanted to pick him up. I couldn't step over men or their belongings. This was very difficult because I had five brothers. I had to tell my brothers to pick up after themselves and they had to listen to me. I had to wear my hair up or tie it back and I wasn't allowed to cut it for the year. I couldn't even dye it. I could not wear makeup. I could not have a boyfriend. I could not attend any kind of ceremony for four days before or after my moon time. There seemed to be so much that I could not do. I felt that it was going to be too difficult. I then had to sacrifice something I really liked. I thought about some of the things I like to do such as swimming, volleyball, skating, and dancing, I decided to give up powwow dancing. When we finished, she took odemin, a strawberry, broke it, and squished it on my forehead. Everyone in the room shared the remaining strawberries. I could no longer eat them from that moment on. The day was not over yet. It was my birthday, and my parents had requested a birthday song for me. Since I started my fast and gave up dancing, I couldn't dance in the powwow circle. When it was time for the song, the master of ceremonies told me to sit in the southern direction of the powwow circle. A blanket was placed beside me. He asked all the jingle dress dancers to dance around my family and me. I felt kind of embarrassed. I didn't want everyone to know I had started my moon time. When the song began, all the elders and community members came to shake my hand some of them placed gifts of money on the blanket. I began to feel special. The year was kind of hard. Sometimes my brothers would not listen to me. I couldn't pick up my baby brother and I really wanted to. Every time I would see Lily, she would ask me how I was doing with the berry fast. She would give me a big hug and encouraged me to continue. She really made me feel special. My very fast was coming to an end. I began to prepare for a two-day fast from food and water. My nokomist prepared a medicine bundle for me and told me how to use the medicines. I brought a wooden bowl to place the four sacred foods in as an offering. The four sacred foods are wild meat, or gigo, fish, odeminan, berries, mendomen, corn, and minomen, wild rice. I also had collected gifts to give away at my ceremony. My parents brought me to Lily's. I was going to fast in the bush behind her house. I was kind of nervous, 
I knew that I would be alone out there and I was not used to being by myself in the bush. We walked a long way behind her house. She left me there and told me that I would be okay. She told me to use the mishkigi, the medicines, when I needed them. It was so quiet when I was fasting. The day seemed to last forever. I thought about a lot of things like my parents, my brothers, and my cousins, and I was thirsty and hungry too. Up, go nagin, wen dum. I was so happy to see Lily when she came to bring me back to her house. When I finished my fast, Lily gave me a cedar bath. She braided my hair and gave me a small eagle plume. She encouraged me with kind words and told me that what I had done was really good. I had to wait alone in a quiet room while everyone arrived for the ceremony. The ceremony began. When it was time for me to join the circle, my grandmother helped me, my nokamis. I had to cover my head with a towel when I came dancing into the circle. I danced around the feast food once, then the towel was removed from my head. I continued to dance around three more times with my nokamis. I was honored with a large eagle plume from my father. When it was time to take a drink of water, I had to refuse it three times. The first time was for the Benujiak, the children. The second time was for the Nokomisak, the grandmothers. And the third time was for the men. And on the fourth time, I could finally take a drink. I was so happy to eat berries for the first time in a year. They were so tasty. I then had a giveaway. I gave gifts to everyone who was there. Everyone shared words and encouraged me. My parents really appreciated Lily and her family for all their help. It was explained to me that a woman is so powerful during her moon time. It's a time when energies are being rebuilt. When a woman starts her moon time for the first time, her aura is very strong. It's much more powerful because she is so pure. The reason for all the firm rules is because energies would be affected all around her. If she holds a newborn baby, she is capable of taking some of the baby's energy and delaying it in some way, such as walking or talking. If she steps over a man or their clothing, she could affect them and take their energy. The same reason goes for attending ceremonies. Whatever the ceremony may be meant for, she is capable of taking that energy too. I don't feel so bad when I have to miss ceremonies or powwows anymore. Moon time is a ceremony. During moon time, we visit our nokamis. There's no higher honor in the world than to sit there and be honored by your nokamis, your grandmother. That is why at ceremonies, nokamis suck. Grandmothers are so highly honored. They are honored because of their power as women. Women can give life. Women are medicine. We give thanks to all those who are keeping these traditional ways alive, and especially to Lily Ba. Miigwech. Okay, so uh, we're going to finish off this session with a song that I composed, and it is a thank you song. And the words in the song are Chimigwech Gijem Nado, thank you, uh, Great Spirit, Kinegego Gijatoyen, for everything that you made, and Kinegego Gamijiang. For everything that you gave us and it goes like this <clears throat>
miigwech. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, I hope you are enjoying your day, the longest day, the winter solstice, winter solstice, the summer solstice, and uh, uh, longest day. So uh, us Anishinaabeg, we always understood the relationship that we had with Gizes, and we give thanks to Gizes and for this uh, Nibing, this, this summer season that's upon us that, that uh, grandmother or our mother Nibin is going to now be nurturing us with all the beautiful fruitation and, and, and the uh, foods and uh, medicines um, the vegetables, all the things that grow upon her. So chimigwech. Bama pee.